This is video number seven about complex arithmetic methods and geometric interpretations with Mathematica. We are again focusing on using Mathematica. Quick review of the last video. Uh, I wrote a symbolic form of the triangle inequality. That's a definitely an important inequality to keep in mind as you learn complex analysis. And I also wrote some Mathematica code to illustrate complex subtraction, though I I forgot to really use the locator in the last video with the subtraction part because again the, the point about using locator is to be able to move your complex numbers around in this case and see how the diagram changes. And what was in this diagram, it's a bit confusing. We've got two complex numbers, A and B, and we are subtracting them. We are forming A minus B. Either one of these black arrows can be viewed as A minus B, as well as this red dot over here on the left. You can think of A minus B as A plus negative B, so if this is B right here, then negative B goes down this way. A plus negative B forms this parallelogram over here, so this dot is the answer as well as this arrow. Alternatively, A minus B can be thought of as being up here. You take B and you add A minus B, the B's cancel to give you A going from here to here. So again, either one of these black arrows can be thought of as A minus B. What we're going to focus on in this video is complex multiplication. And I think I will move away from the example we've been dealing with, 3 plus 6i and 4 plus 5i, and let's look at a couple other complex numbers. 2 plus 3i times negative 1 plus 4i will be our example, and we are going to be multiplying them. How should we multiply them? Complex multiplication. Well, let's make a guess based on kind of the way I approached it with the complex addition, in that you can think of the complex number, the imaginary unit i, as sort of just representing a symbol. You treat it as a, a placeholder in a sense, like an x, and you treat it as if you are adding binomials or polynomials in general. The same kind of thing happens when you're doing complex multiplication with an important caveat. So for example, here I am in a sense multiplying two binomials, 2 plus 3i and negative 1 plus 4i. I could treat that i as if it's an x and just go ahead and use FOIL Hopefully you recall FOIL, F-O-I-L, F-O-I-L, first times first, outside times outside, la inside times inside, and last times last. It's a consequence of the distributive property that that works. Two times negative one is first times first, that would be negative two. Two times four I is outside times outside, that will be plus eight I. 3i times negative 1 is inside times inside. That'll be negative 3i minus 3i. And then last times last is 3i times 4i, which would be 12i squared. The caveat that I referred to is that anytime you see an i squared, you should replace it with a negative 1. You should also combine like terms. So we have a negative 2. 12 times i squared is really 12 times negative 1 is negative 12. And then we've got 8i minus 3i is 5i. The final answer is negative 14 plus 5i, if indeed this is a good way to multiply complex numbers. That would be the final answer there. Is it what Mathematica will do? Yes, it is. There's the answer, negative 14 plus 5i. I would encourage you to try some other examples, and if you have Mathematica, you can check your work. You can also check your work on calculators. Let's think about now visualizing this. See if we can't visualize this in the course of five minutes. Let's change the A and the B. So A is now going to be 2 plus 3i. B is going to be negative 1 plus 4i. Let's, okay, this is going to be a little tricky. Let's not worry about plotting their product yet. Let's just plot the vectors for A and B individually. So, 
our graph is going to be fairly sparse at the moment. There we go. A is right there, B is right there, A is 2 plus 3i, B is negative 1 plus 4i. All right, now how are we going to plot their product? Turns out you can't just do A times B if you're using locator like this. That's going to plot the wrong point because it doesn't know that A and B are, image, are complex numbers here. So what can you do that would still allow you to use the manipulate? You can do, well, I'll go ahead and write the general rule for complex multiplication here. That would be helpful. By the same process that I showed you with the particular example, we can figure out a general rule for complex multiplication. And I'll leave it to you to illustrate by using FOIL and also using the fact that i squared equals negative 1 to see that the multiplication of these two complex numbers is going to give you this. a plus bi times c plus di is going to give you this. Now a and b down in the manip manipulate represent the entire complex number with both the real and the imaginary part. So how are we going to represent that in Mathematica here as a point? Turns out that if I do something like this, watch what I'm doing here, a and then with double brackets put a 1 in there, that represents the first coordinate of the point a. So the point a is going to start at 2, 3, its first coordinate is 2, it's, if you're thinking of it as a complex number, its real part is 2. This will be the first coordinate or the real part of A. If I put a 2 in there, it would be the second coordinate or the imaginary part of A. Look back up at this formula here. What we have here is the first coordinate of the first complex number times the first coordinate of the second complex number, the real parts, minus the product of the imaginary parts. So, with a little bit of thought, you should realize that we can do this to get the same thing. I've got the real parts being multiplied minus the imaginary parts being multiplied. Look at this. Look at the imaginary part of the answer. It's the product of the real part of the first times the imaginary part of the second plus the product of the imaginary part of the first times the real part of the second. So I could type that in here like this. Plus sign. Maybe you want to pause the video and look this over. Compare this with this. Think about it. Again, in the locator here, in the manipulate, this is A and this is B. It's unfortunate that I use the same letters here, I guess. But that, that should do it. That should give us a plot of their product. I need to make my plot range bigger. There it is over there. Let me also plot an arrow going out there. and paste this whole thing here in place of this B here. There's their product. Now it's not so easy to see what's going on geometrically. Is there some sort of parallelogram here? Well, no. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you the answer about how to interpret this geometrically and we'll continue thinking about it in future videos. But I'd like you to see, once I show you the answer, I'd like you to spend some time figuring out how you could double check that. We will double check it in the next video. What you do to get the to get the modulus of the answer is you multiply the moduli of the factors in the product to get the modulus of the answer, the length of this arrow. And to get the angle of the answer from the positive real axis, which is called the argument of the complex number, this angle here, you add the two angles of the factors in the product. It's a very important fact in complex analysis and we're going to spend, we're going to think about that a lot and use it a lot. Spend some time seeing if you could figure out how to verify that for this example. We'll do it in the next video. I will point out here that you can of course move these points.
because of the locator command within the manipulate it and see how things change.